it. Hi everyone. So today, uh, what I wanted to talk with you about is how you might be able to come to Canada to work um, and to immigrate to Canada. Now I understand that most of you who are going to be watching this video um, you already trained to be physicians and you would like to um, come to Canada um, and work in Canada. So what I'm going to do today is break up uh, my presentation into two parts. The first part is going to talk about temporary residence and your ability to come to Canada to work as a temporary form worker. And the second part will be to talk about your ability to immigrate to Canada. Um, the reason why it's very important for me to talk about your possibilities of working in Canada temporarily um, is because that is related also to permanent residence. As you'll see, um, that's going to be a uh, very important for a lot of you um, with regard to your ability to qualify or to be able to be selected to get permanent residence. So let's talk about um, temporary residence and your ability to work. So in order to work in Canada, uh, for the most part, you're going to be you're going to need a work permit um, if you don't have permanent residence yet. And the work permit uh, will be for a limited amount of time. And depending on your circumstances, you may or may not be able to extend uh, your work permit. I'm going to go through a few categories that uh, you may qualify for. Uh, the first one is. If you have a residency position or a fellowship position, we can apply for a work permit for you. Now, the issue with that, as I understand MD Consultants ha has told me, that a lot of you, if you aren't permanent residents, may not be able to participate in CARMS, uh, the selection process uh, for getting residency in Canada, and may not be able to get residency without permanent residence. So it's kind of, of like a chicken and egg sort of situation. Um, what we're going to talk about is other ways that you can get work permits um, and also then get permanent residence so then you can um, get into residency in Canada. But some of you, a few select uh, people may be able to get fellowships where you're you, you, but you have to contact the hospitals and, and the universities where they're offering direct fellowships to work with them. The other uh, kind of fellowship that you might be able to get into um, and get a work permit for um, are postdoctoral fellowships. So if you have a PhD and you wanted to work in Canada um, as a postdoctoral fellow, we can, if you get a position, this is, these are all you know, situations where you actually have to get the position first uh, with the university, and we can get you a work permit for that. Now, a lot of you probably aren't, don't fall into those situations, so what should you do then? Well, one of the really good ways to get your foot in the door and be able to get a work permit is to come to Canada to study. Um, if you are studying in Canada in a program of over six months, then you would be able to get um, a study permit. And, um, you know, depending on the school, it's really important as to which universe, uh, which school you can go to. So most public, almost all public universities and colleges will be okay, but there's a few private colleges that will give you some difficulty to get those work permits that you need to get and the study permits. So uh, make sure that you're very careful about that. Um, if you have any further questions, I will be leaving you my um, contact information and you can contact me about um, your own circumstances afterwards. Um, so with regard to studying, if you have a uh, study permit, you can work in Canada part-time while you're studying, uh, 20 hours a week. When you graduate, if you have studied in a program of two years or more, you're eligible for an open work permit of three years. And that's called a postgraduate 
work permit. And with a postgraduate work permit, that's an open work permit, you can work anywhere you like. So that's going to be important afterwards with regard to permanent residence. You may not be able to get into residency right away, but you may be able to get some really important work experience in Canada with the postgraduate work permit, which will help you to get permanent residence. There's also one other work permit that I wanted to bring your attention to that might be relevant to you. Um, it's the open spousal work permit. So in Canada, um, if an individual is a student who has a study permit in Canada, or is a worker who is working in a high-skilled position, their spouse, and that, by definition of spouse, I mean not only people who are married, but also people who are common law, people who have lived together in a relationship for over one year. The spouse is entitled to an open spousal work permit. So if my husband, for example, or even my boyfriend, who I've lived with for over one year, um, is now I don't have both a boyfriend and a husband just wanted to make that clear okay um, just anyway if I had a boyfriend of over one year who I uh, lived together um, and um, and and uh, my boyfriend is a student in Canada well I would be eligible then for open spousal work permit which allows me to work um, anywhere in Canada. So those are very valuable uh, work permits that you might be eligible for. Okay, so let's move on to permanent residence. Now with permanent residence, I'm going to talk about two things um, that uh, may apply to you or, or two uh, avenues that may apply to you. Uh, the first category is express entry and that is a federal program. Uh, immigration is really governed um, by the federal government and it's throughout Canada um, that's the government responsible for the entire country. Um, and so express entry is a federal program um, and that uh, governs the Canadian experience class, the skilled worker class, the skilled trades class. I'll talk about that a little bit more in detail afterwards. Uh, but remember when I said uh, immigration is a federal program? Well, immigration is also a provincial program because the, um, uh, the federal government gives the provinces uh, powers as well to select people that they want to live in their province. So each province in Canada actually has a program that where they get to select people who um, they want to stay um, in their province. Um, we're not going to talk too much about the provincial nominee programs today, uh, A, because there are there is really 12, 13 of them actually in Canada, all the provinces and territories have them, um, and uh, it'll really depend on where you want to live as to which applies to you. But I wanted to uh, speak specifically about the express entry system. So express entry. Well, the name is a bit of a misnomer. It's, it might be express for some people, but for other people, it's anything but express. Let me explain. So, first of all, with express entry, you must first qualify for permanent residence under one of three categories. That's the Federal Skilled Worker Class, Canadian Experience Class, Federal Skilled Trades Class. I'll go into a little bit more about that um, in, a, in a little bit. If you qualify for permanent residence, and a lot of you might already qualify for permanent residence, then you can make an online profile. Now, the thing is, in Canada right now, it's not enough to just qualify for permanent residence. Because after you qualify, you get yourself into an express entry pool. It's not a real pool, it's an online sort of uh, online system where you, you are in there. You can be in there for one year. But the trick is not to just get into the pool, the trick is to get out of the pool and get an invitation to apply. Because 
Right now in Canada, it's not just good to qualify, you actually have to compete with other people in the pool in order to have the ability to apply. So what happens is you will, um, once you qualify, you can stay in the pool and you will get a score, a CRS score, a, a comprehensive ranking system score. And that's going to be based on your background. And if you have a permission nominee program uh, nomination, well, that will give you points. But most, almost, uh, I would say probably around 80% of people at least will be, uh, it, the points would just come from your background. And once you have that score, you are in the pool and it, you'll be there until you get drawn. So every two weeks, the government announces a draw and uh, they'll num announce a number for that draw. So for example, if my number was a 462, the government and the government announces 470. Well, everybody whose score is above 470 will get an invitation to apply and then they can actually submit their application to the government. But because my score was 462, I won't get a chance to apply. Next draw, it could come down. The next draw could be 450. If 450 is announced, I will get an invitation to apply because my score was 462 and on it goes. So right now, it's not just good enough to get into the pool, that you have to qualify to get into the pool. What's really important is what your score will be to see whether or not you will ever be able to get out of the pool. The processing time right now for getting out of the pool is actually quite fast. It's around six months or so. It's fast for Canadian immigration laws. Um, and so around six months to get your permanent residence after you've received an invitation to apply. All right, so let's go on to look at, first of all, how to get into the pool. So um, I'm going to talk just briefly about two programs that will allow you to get into the pool. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the Federal Skilled Trades class because I don't think any of you will actually need to qualify for that. That's for um, you know carpenters and cooks and chefs. It's not doesn't pertain to doctors. Um, the first one that I wanted to talk with you about is the federal skilled worker class. So the federal skilled worker class, a lot of you may qualify under this program because it's for everyone around the world, irregardless of where your work experience is from. It looks at um, a combination of your background, um, but one of the most important things you'll need in order to qualify for this is your work experience. You need to have at least one year of high-skilled, full-time, continuous work experience. Uh, working as a physician is certainly high-skilled work experience. Um, then you also have to pass uh, your language exams. Uh, so um, write this down if you if you don't know. Um, in in Canada, everyone doesn't matter whether or not you have a PhD in English literature or not. You must do an English exam called the IELTS. I E L T S, and it's the general IELTS. Um, so to Get into the pool, you'll need to have a score of 6.0 in each of the categories, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. There's also another exam you can take called the CELPIP, C-E-L-P-I-P, but that's really only available in Canada. So the second category I wanted to talk with you about is the Canadian Experience class. Now, if you haven't worked in Canada before, um, you won't qualify under this class. But the reason why I want to mention it to you is remember when in the beginning I said your ability to work in Canada can impact your ability uh, to immigrate? Well, this is one of the reasons. 
So for the Canadian experience class, you need to have work experience in Canada that's high skilled for one year and it needs to be after you've finished studying or if you are not studying, certainly you can count that work experience as well, but it has to be in Canada. So for this um, category, all you need to do is have one year of work experience in Canada and you need to pass your language exams as well. So that's how to get into the pool. Like I said, a lot of you may already qualify. Okay, so let's say that you are now in the pool. Well, like I said, it's not just good enough to be in the pool, you also have to get out of the pool. And to get out of the pool, we are going to look at um, whether or not you have a provincial nomination. If you have a provincial nomination under the express entries class, there are a lot of different provincial nomination programs out there, not all of them will give you 600 points. Specific ones for certain provinces will give you 600 points. If you have, you're lucky enough to have one of those, then you uh, will be selected and invited to apply. But for most of you, almost all of you, you probably won't have that. Um, and in which case, then you're going to um, look at your human capital score. So the maximum score that you can get for the human capital score is 600 points. And right now, the categories that we're going to look at is your, first of all, your age. So right now, the, um, the government has decided that they like people who are young in Canada. So after the age of 30, unfortunately, every year your, you have your birthday, it goes down by at least five points. Sometimes it goes down, down by six points or, or more. By the time you reach your 40s, uh, you're going to uh, see a decrease of 10 points uh, per birthday, unfortunately. Um, so age is one of the uh, very important factors there. That's why you, if you qualify and you think you can get through, best not to wait. Uh, the second is education. Um, so if you have a professional degree, such as a medical doctorate, that is an excellent, um, that is an excellent uh, level as well for education. That's considered very high. Language is probably one of the most important categories. Um, so for language, you in this are to be competitive. Really, I like to see um, scores of 7.0 for the IELTS for reading, writing, and speaking, and 8.0 for listening. Um, that's not to say if you have lower than this that you can't get invited. It's just that you get to have a certain level um, for your language uh, once you reach that level for, for language that makes you really competitive. Now again, relevant Canadian work experience is also very important as well. Um, and then foreign work experience can also count. Finally, uh, if you're married, uh, we can use your spouse's um, education, language, Canadian work experience. Now, that's not to say that you know you should just get married to try to you know get more points. In fact, single people normally have better scores than married people, unless you have a super spouse, and then you know it could be around the same or a little bit higher. Finally, we have some new rules that have that are going to be taking place on November 19th, and it's going to be um, in place by then. Um, so those people who have studied in Canada will get more points. And um, if you have an employer-specific work permit, you will also have more points if you worked for that place for one year. So by employer-specific, it's not 
uh, the postgraduate work permits or the open spousal work permits, which are open work permits. Um, this is really going to pertain to very specific work permits such as postdoctoral work permits uh, or the fellowship work permits or other kinds of work permits where you can only work for one employer. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have a lot more questions. Um, it's really important that if you're thinking of coming to Canada and immigrating to Canada, uh, that we sit down with you and go over your own personal uh, circumstances. Uh, so what we can do is we can do a consultation with you. Um, my contact information is on the last slide of, uh, of the presentation. Um, and if you are working with MD Consultants, we will offer you a discount as well, so make sure you mention that. Um, so you can also check out our website at www.lmlawgroup.com and it's really important as well that you sign up to our newsletter because what I'm telling you today is true today, but the news uh, immigration laws will change all of the time and the only way that we can update you on important news is by sending out um, information through our newsletter list. Uh, so you can sign on to that on our main page and just scroll down and underneath the contact us you can sign up for that. Okay, well thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care.